And with an eye to the future, tomorrow begins today. Nintendo, the world's leader in video games, has joined forces with Silicon Graphics, the world's leader in visual computing, to introduce the most exhilarating, breathtakingly realistic 3D video entertainment ever witnessed. Project Reality. So welcome. Today is a big day because we're talking about my complete boxed N64 collection. I finally did it. I got all of the boxes for the North American N64 set. Not only did we get all of the boxes for the N64 set in North America, but I have a couple of PAL game complete in box and a couple of Japanese games complete in box that were exclusive to those regions. This set took me a long time to collect for, and it's the set that made me a gamer. And when I say a gamer, I also mean collector as well. The first time I got an N64 was when I was in high school, and I started with Super Mario 64 and Wave Race 64, starting out and enjoying the games. At that time, we would just buy the games, and uh, you know, and we'd get the one or two or whatever. And my mom came home with Nagano Winter Olympics, and when she came home with that game, I realized there's more games than just the Mario games, just the Street Fighters, etc. And so I started collecting a bunch. And back then, I kept my boxes. And in keeping all of my boxes, I uh, kept good care of them. I was in college at the time, and I would bring the boxes and you know home and, and keep them in my dorm or whatever, and they still stayed in good condition. And I amassed all of these. Here's the thing. Back then, I probably had about 40 or 50 boxes from back in the old days, and then, here I am scrolling through Facebook and this random guy, Aaron, shows up on my Facebook feed and he's holding up an NES cartridge. I thought, that's interesting. This person's so excited about the Nintendo that they're making it their Facebook profile picture. This is a foreign concept to me. And so I reach out to him and we connect, we talk, and I find out about YouTube and all of this other stuff. And so one of the reasons I love the N64 is not only because I loved the games back in the day and I wanted to collect for it, but it's because it introduced me to this whole world of video game collecting, this hobby that gives me so much joy in my life and has brought so much excitement to me personally. And so uh, I set it out as a goal. Once I got to know uh, Riff, once I got to know Ricky and learned about this whole YouTube thing and swap meets and conventions and expos, getting to meet Jer, getting to meet Gabo, getting to meet everybody, the N64 is the console that sort of made me deep dive into retro gaming. So for me, this is a really important console. Admittedly, it's not the world's greatest console. It's got a lot of problems. It was a lot of growing pains in the 90s to go from 2D video games to 3D video games. The PlayStation did more interesting things with cutscenes and full motion video and having more data to store things, whereas the N64 brought us some of the most classic 3D platforming games of all time. And so for me, there are different games in this set that really stand out. What's your favorite game on the Nintendo 64? Uh, Golden Eye. Uh, Star Fox 64. It's really good. That's a really good game. So a lot of people ask, how long did it take you to get the N64 boxed set? Well, it took me in total probably about 10 or 12 years, maybe 15 years, when I compile all of it. Having the boxes from back in the day and keeping those and the manuals and everything, and then waiting until later, probably at around 2012. From 2012 to 2020, I really made it my goal. As a collector, I'm only gonna go heavy for the N64 complete in box set. And I took my time. A lot of collectors, when they're going for stuff, they get really impatient. They wanna have everything right away. And there's an argument to be made for getting stuff quickly and an argument to be made for patience. I felt that being patient was more fun, uh, it made the journey longer, I got known for being the N64 guy, so even local collectors would be like, hey, I found this game, do you need it for your collection? And I would get great deals or be able to do good trades for things, which helped me save a lot of money and collecting for the set. The other thing though is that uh, the value of the N64 really has shot up in the past couple of years. A lot of these games today, if you were to buy them just straight out, even just the mid-tier games, you're looking at well over $100 for complete in box games. And I didn't start there. I started way before the games were going for that much money, um, which helped me to be able to do it. So I felt, I felt my goal was reasonable, my timing was patient. It's things that I would encourage everyone to do and make this 
about collecting as a hobby, as a journey, as something that you just let take its own time and being patient. I mean, again, this took what, 15 years, 10, 15 years to collect all this stuff. And there's still more to go with a couple more manuals and things like that, if we can hopefully get it. What's your favorite Nintendo 64 game? Probably Ocarina of Time. Oh, so you say Ocarina, not Ocarina. Yeah, I say Ocarina, I don't know why. Oh, I, just, I think that's what I say too. Did I ever tell you I have really bad memory? But looking at this, I remember Mystical Ninja, and I love that So thing. good. Really good. I used to like the game too, actually. Yeah, now that I think about and it. And other game that I really like at least Biofreaks. I know Turok is a sweet N64 game, but Rage Wars, oh my gosh. Once in a century, from the four corners of the lost land, the warriors are summoned to the Rage Wars. They come to fight the clan of Turok for control of the light burden. These are the supreme warriors, risking all for the ultimate prize, for the power of creation and annihilation. Many will battle, only one will survive. Turok Rage Wars. This one was, this one's pretty bizarre. So yeah. Riff and I were at the swap meet and we saw this one <laughs> and we both passed it up. We didn't realize there was color variants on all this good stuff. Yeah. We got chewed out in the comments too. Oh yeah, we got it. We passed Real on good. the the more hard to find version for like $2. Oh, wow, I don't even think I've ever seen the box for this. That thing is so th beautiful. This is a multiplayer only shooter in the Turok franchise. So you can play this game single player, but it's meant to be played with four people. The problem was if you tried to play the game through on co-op, uh, unfortunately you could not complete the game because there was a glitch. Acclaim, as a way of remedying this, made a bunch of uh, copies of the game you could write in and then they would send you this gray cartridge. Originally this game came out in a black cartridge, but the gray cartridge one means that it's been you know fixed and everything so you can complete the game in um, co-op mode. The gray cartridge variant is considerably more expensive than the black cartridge variant. The I, last time I checked the black cartridge variant, it was like maybe $10 what for about the game. What the gray? Yeah. The gray one can go for a couple hundred dollars. Hey, we passed on it for like two bucks. Yay. Mm, nice. There you go. I actually didn't know that whole story on how why it was gray, the gray cart. Really? So there's a few games that today as a collector, you might be surprised to find are really challenging to find on the N64 in a good condition box. I'm gonna show you a couple of highlights that I think are tough to find in box. One is PGA European Tour. Whenever I've seen this box, even this one's a little bit sun faded, these can be really tough to find in good condition. The other one is NBA In The Zone 2000. Now today, EA owns basically all of the, the sports license uh, and, and same with the 2K game series. We only think of basketball games as maybe one or two series. Back in the 90s, Konami had an NBA uh, brand, Sony had one, Nintendo had one with Kobe Bryant. There was a lot of different ones out there. This one just didn't rise to the surface as being one that people really cared about. And in addition, most sports gamers didn't really care about their boxes. So finding NBA in the Zone 2000 in the box and in good condition. This is a late release title that um, was the last in this series. I've seen copies on eBay go for a couple hundred dollars uh, in complete in the box, which is shocking. The other one is Chameleon Twist 2. This is a platforming game with a unique mechanic with the, the chameleon tongue and how it navigates the environments. But finding this one complete in box and at a decent price is really hard. We all know games like Daikatana, Stunt Racer, Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut. Those are the hardest ones to find because those are the, the blockbuster exclusive games, etc. But for some reason, these ones, this was harder for me to find. And the other one, which we highlighted in a recent video, is Charlie Blast's Territory. Finding this game complete in box, I almost never see it complete in the box. And today it's going for uh, like 150 or more dollars, um, which is crazy, which is what it is. It is what it is. What is it? <laughs> one thing to note when going for a complete in box collection on the N64 is that the game International Superstar Soccer 2000, a great game. There was a version of it released where the box in the back is in English, mine is in Spanish. Some N64 collectors would say no, the real one is the one that's in English, but it's all still NTSC region, so I'm gonna count it in my collection. But be mindful, the one that is in English on the back is actually in uh, higher demand than the one that's in Spanish. Vuelve el indiscutible campeón del fútbol. 
juegue con la nueva modalidad profesional, animaciones y juegos más perfeccionados. The reason why this one is extra collectible is because it comes with your very own life-sized Gabo who reads the back of the box to you whenever you need. It sucks, but I like it. <laughs> so what are a couple of N64 games that you guys grew up with that are fun and interesting for you? I'm going to speak for Ricky and I both on the first one because this is a game Ricky and I played all the time together and we uh -oh. used to every day after high school all the time have Smash Bros tournaments at my house and it was like a real thing that like people talked about back in the day like we used to play back in the day but no this was like a real like me, him, my brother, his friends, we'd show up every day after school. Bro, it got serious. It got intense. I was Kirby mainly. I mean, me too. Kirby we were both was Kirby my too, to be honest. The one I still play to this day, no matter what, because it always gets me, is Star Fox 64. Oh, because so it is just, it's, it's amazing. The story's good. The catch lines on this game are amazing. It's like we still use them till this day. It's like the only thing we ever talk about. Do I'm, a better roll. Dude, it, it was just one of those games that you could <laughs> yeah. play and play and play. It was, so it was one of those games that you could just play constantly. Just play over and over and over and you'd never get tired of it because no. it's so good. I'm going to talk about my personal games. Honestly, I was looking through these, kind of like what games I probably put some of the most time into. Yeah. No joke. Probably the oh, San Francisco Rush games. Rush. Great. I used to put so Ricky good. and I, yeah, all the time yeah. we go, Rush. That's just like our thing because we used to play these all the, I'd say for me the two I played most would probably be San, San Francisco Rush and Rush 2049. The multiplayer mode on 2049 is one of the best multiplayer modes on any game. And I know Cruise in USA was kind of like the more talked about game, I guess, in arcade racing games more at the time. Arcade. I think yeah, it was, it was, he, he came out first than those. But yeah. these before were those. Awesome. This was cool because your car actually blew up. Like, yeah, I don't know, yeah. I would always laugh when we were racing <laughs> and your buddy just blew up, be like, oh, yes. I've seen pulse cannons and gladiator droids. I've seen beggars cannon and imperial sewers. I've seen dead ends and infinite space. I've seen 360 degrees of tomorrow, and for once, live to tell about it, because I've got the ultimate fighting machine. Star Wars games were notoriously a mixed bag. On the Super Nintendo, you of course had Super Star Wars, Super Empire Strikes Back, and uh, Super Return of the Jedi, but Rogue Squadron on the N64 is an absolute classic. The game that is rough is this one here, uh, Shadows of the Empire, but I still, because I loved it back then, I still love playing it today. This is the first time that I hear the snow park music of Empire Strike Back. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude, in a game. That's awesome. Yeah. 40 Winks came out for the N64 as the only that I'm aware of homebrew repro title that was in any kind of um, uh, resale after the conclusion of the N64's life. This game was originally on the PlayStation 1 and it came out on the PlayStation 1. The N64 version of it was something like over 90% complete. And this brand here, Pico, they picked up the game, they finished the development of it, and they released it on the N64. You can get it complete in box today. I don't know what the value is or if you would count it as part of the set, but the Super Nintendo has a ton of these kinds of games. The Dreamcast has a ton of these kinds of games. The NES has a ton of these kinds of games or homebrews or hacks or whatever. But this one was actually supposed to come out for the N64 back in the day, and here it is now released. Uh, they made a short run of these, uh, and there's a couple different box variants of it for those that are collecting for everything. With it, it also came with a special edition controller, which I ended up getting, and a stuffed uh, animal of the clock, but I don't have the clock. I like hearing more talk. I'm learning. Oh, dude, this is rare. Wow, Gabo just dropped that off camera, Whoops. off the top of the shelf. Well, he j like Mort, Ricky, Mort Ricky. just got this. We, hey. we literally, last time we saw him, he was so happy. So a big thing that's that's been a part of collecting in the past, I don't know, couple years maybe, mm -hmm. year especially, has been collecting sealed games. Which is crazy to me. And getting them graded, and then people will get them graded, yep. and then there's auction websites beyond eBay where people will spend literally thousands of dollars mm -hmm. on sealed games. Yep. I have a few sealed games nice. that I, I got before all of this was really- Before the craze. Uh, before the, the retro gaming craze, which is sort of copying things like comic books and yeah. those kinds of yep. collectibles, coins, Wanna. et cetera. Yeah. 
So um, let me highlight to you a couple of the games I have sealed that I think are pretty cool. So this one here, not in the best of condition, but Star Soldier is generally a pretty tough game to find. Mine is sealed. Um, so you can see the creasing here. This wouldn't be graded very highly at all, but it is in fact sealed. Batman Beyond, Ooh. which was a bit of a terrible game. Uh, mine here also is um, sealed. Mia Ham Soccer. Mia Ham sealed. Is it really? Yeah. I was literally kidding that yeah. Mia Ham Soccer was sealed. And it is. You can still find the game Powerpuff Girls Chemical Extraction uh, sealed for uh, a decent amount online. This copy of it is in particularly uh, pretty good condition. It looks really nice. Yeah, I got this from our friend Bobby over at Dusty Games. Bobby! Uh, I, but I got this maybe six years ago. So let's talk about the other thing with collecting for the N64, which is that Blockbuster was yes, some a big part of this. So the only way to play these games was to rent them at Blockbuster. I have a sealed copy of one of those games, which is Razor. You can see it's a Blockbuster exclusive. Uh, for the N64. This one's in actually pretty great shape. I got this from my good buddy John, who works at Blizzard Entertainment, and he's somebody who uh, is a collector that many of us know, and uh, a good friend uh, of mine. He gave this to me as a birthday gift about four or five years ago. Super grateful to have this in my collection. I'll probably never open any of my sealed Your games. Sealed ones, yeah. uh, and I don't care. Like, people are like, you know, you need to open all the sealed yeah. games. No, I mean, not at this point. There's many other ways to open them. No. No, don't. I would say nah. So my Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut is, uh, I traded this for a Wii U console a little while ago. I found a Wii U at a garage sale, worked great. Another collector buddy was getting rid of his N64 set. I traded that console for this. Uh, today, value-wise, this is worth considerably more than the Wii U <laughs> console, so that worked out pretty good for me. Yeah. Also, you know mine's authentic because it has a cutout on the label and it's in poor shape. So, yeah. uh, in, in a sense, I'm bummed that the label it has a cutout on it, but on the other sense, I, I mean, it verifies its authenticity. It wasn't really. too good to be true. Yeah. You know? So this is the last thing I needed to complete the set, and I got it from uh, our buddy Ryan. Uh, and a great deal that he gave to me for just the the box uh, only and uh, no manual So I still need the manual today the manual alone people are paying around a thousand dollars Wow for the manual. that's like in my opinion like 980 too much. Yeah, but, hey. <laughs> well, hey, but here we are because yeah. enough people want it. Yeah, so. yeah Stunt racer 64. Oh, that's here's, right. Here's yeah. mine. This one is complete. It does have the manual um, this box is in actually really good condition outside of this section here. Super Bowling is one of the other big heavy hitters that's hard to find in box. Today it goes for about $800 complete in the box. What? This is in 2020. Who knows what it's going to be in five years. I can't see this game sustaining its value just because it's a terrible game. My buddy John, who gave me the Razor yeah. uh, game, he gave me the cartridge of this. It was the last cartridge that I needed to complete my set, and he gave it to me wow, as a gift wow. a few years ago. Wow, so, that's huge. Yeah, it was such an awesome gift. Good people in the community, man. I originally bought this back in the day, but I sold it for like $90 in like 2006 or something. Wow. And I regretted it so much, and so I found a deal on eBay for this. Ended up just biting the bullet and getting it. Today it goes for about five, six hundred dollars complete in box. I remember turning down uh, a friend of ours, Ricky Michael Burt, uh, for paying seventy dollars for Little Samson. I was like, that's a ripoff, and that was like seven years ago. Well, who would have known that that game today goes easily for over one thousand? Oh yeah, all day, all day, all yeah. day. Katana was uh, mostly a rental. This box is in super clean condition. Really thrilled to have it in such great shape and with the manual. Today when they show up on eBay. <laughs> It really smells. It's just video games. <laughs> Today when they show up on eBay, they show up for quite a bit of money. Yeah. And there you go. All right. I never thought I'd be blowing my burp away with that katana. <laughs> That's about what the game is yeah. good for, to be yeah. honest, though. So everybody's collection has games to them that are very important. This one's very important to me. You guys saw this on an NES Pursuit where Jer gave this to me as a gift. And uh, this was something that he had back in the day that he and his brother got at a used game store and he just kept the box, and when he knew I was going for the full set, he gave this to me totally as a that. gift. I, I, might, I might cry. Oh. I got this game a long time ago, probably 15 years ago now, for $3.50. Give me a second to let this sit in. 
I don't care that you're filming a show. We did outside of Golden West and before it, I remember that. He told me he was gonna do it, but I didn't know when he was going to. I will never get rid of this. Just That's because awesome. it means so much to I me. I remember how stoked you were when he gave that to yeah. you. Yeah, that was, that was really awesome. Cool. Unbelievable. I've been looking for this box and hoping to get it forever. Never thought I would ever get it, and I've got it. The N64 game that I played most, I love it because it was the closest to arcade. Uh huh. So the Snowboard Kids games, hey, have you played these games before? Yes. Okay. Here's what Snowboard Kids is. Snowboard Kids is Mario Kart on snowboards. And so as you go downhill, all of the characters have different items they pick up. So it's not like 1080 or all those other games that are more trick based or realistic based. Um, these games are more based on these characters doing all this cool stuff. The Snowboard Kids 2 box is hard to find. In fact, mine's really beat up. Uh, but the uh, this one, I remember buying this game at Games for Less in Santa Ana, California, when I was in high school. This very box. Now, you yes. know where that is because you yeah. used to go to the same high school as, as I did. Yep. I, when I was sitting in the parking lot outside of my high school reading the manual for this game, and my buddy at the time was like, you are the only person I know who would read a manual for a video game outside of a school. But whatever, it was this copy right here, and that's why it's in such clean shape. I've kept really good care of this one. And I don't share, by the way, I don't share the prices of any of this stuff to say like, oh, look how expensive all this stuff is. It's just more informational to say, isn't it crazy how much this stuff can go for? Sorry. Import games on the N64 are really easy to play. As many people have commented in past videos in the Game Room Tour, um, you can change out the back of an N64 NTSC cartridge, yep. like a Madden or something, and put it on a Japanese cartridge or a PAL cartridge, and it'll work just fine. In this case, there's three games here that I got for the N64 that were not released in the US. One of those is Taz Express. Um, this is, I think it was made into like a GameCube game or a PS2 game after like the fact. Yeah, it's cool. Um, but PAL games don't play great on the uh, N64 yeah. and NTSC consoles and TVs because there's frame differences that make them nearly unplayable, if not entirely unplayable. The Japanese games, not so much. So um, this is Rakuga Kids, which is a fighting game uh, that was cool. put out by Konami. Very colorful. I wish this came to the US. Yeah, it looks like um, hand-drawn little art. Isn't that rad? Really it's cool. Super colorful. Super it, cool It's looking. like you're playing paper I really characters. like the back, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I wish this would have come out in the US, but the Japanese one works great. And the other big one is Sin and Punishment. This game is actually really popular because it was brought to the Wii Virtual Console. It's a really good game too. You and I played it together one yep. of the first times here in this very game room. When we quickly found out, you know, saw it boot up, we saw the Japanese writing, but all of the actual audio was in English. All the voice acting is in English. And you can get this right play it. Didn't I tell you? Make me the bait and Radon will come to feast. Yeah, sure. and there, there's easy ways to get the translations for it and everything. And I think a cartridge only for this on N64, if you want that, can go for like $20. It's not too much. Yeah, so these are my import games. Yeah, and I'm free. We could not say anything about this game because Wave Race 64 is fantastic. When the N64 came out, the graphics on this were insane. The difference from Super Nintendo to this, this was mind blowing to me. To be honest, the music on that is one of my favorites oh, too. Oh, it's so good. Hours, hours trying to perfect the backflip, the front flip, the barrel roll, and then right in the dolphin. And by the end of 1995, Project Reality will be a reality to all home players as well. No other system will offer this dimension of realism. No other manufacturer can promise this scope of play. With this marriage of game-making expertise and technical wizardry, home video entertainment just took on a whole new dimension. The reason we collect video games, especially retro video games, is because they remind us of different times in our lives. It's not because the games are so great to play, which is true in some cases, but predominantly, it's because we were raised with them. If I try to show my youngest brother a great Nintendo Entertainment System game, even like Little Samson or otherwise, he thinks it's kind of cool, but then he moves on. We like the games that we grew up with. They all mean something to us. And so that nostalgia is a powerful drug for all of us. For me, there's a few games in my collection that when I look at them, they take me right back to really important moments. One of those is Pokemon Puzzle League. My brother and I played this copy of the game for hours. 
It's a remake of uh, a puzzle game in Japan that was made into, I think, a Yoshi or Tetris Attack, that's what it was. Um, and then it was remade with a Pokemon skin on the N64. A fun multiplayer game, but really graphically and otherwise not all that interesting. The other one, though, for me is this copy of Banjo Kazooie. Uh, my family went through a personal, um, personally, very challenging uh, trauma, really, for our family where my mom was in a life-threatening car accident and nearly died. And my brother was playing this copy of Banjo-Kazooie and I was the one to share with him what had happened. Um, and so when I look at my collection, I'm not only excited about what's here, but I'm reminded of these different timestamps in my history, in my life, uh, and it evokes those feelings in me, which I know it does for you. In fact, in the comments, I bet if you shared which game or two of yours you would never want to get rid of, I bet there's a great story behind it. And that's one of the things that makes this stuff so powerful is because psychologically, we are attached to these memories that come with these games and just how powerful they are. That's why we probably got into collecting them in the first place. Back in the day, we didn't have a lot of ways to find out about the N64 online. That was a new thing. But one of the ways that we did find out was that we'd get these awesome VHS tapes. I have these four, there's a few other ones that are out there. Would love to get the rest of them, but if you ever see these, these are really cool. They're easy to watch on YouTube and online, but if you gotta have the physical copy, check out the, these uh, copies of the uh, these promos for the N64 and these wonderful games like Diddy Kong, Banjo, Star Fox, and many more, and whatever they're doing behind me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> of course, first party N64 games were the best games on the N64. And a couple of uh, game series got their start here. Super Smash Brothers being one of the big ones, and the Mario Party series. Total classics, and they still go for quite a bit today. But a lot of people don't need to spend a lot on these boxes because they're kind of everywhere. They sold a lot. So if you're looking for these boxes, you can usually find them in pretty good condition. Um, but there's still more expensive stuff. But regardless, these are great uh, games oh. to own and great series that started here on the N64. I strongly recommend the THQ games way more than the Acclaim games. They're much better games. They high quality. That's what THQ and stands they're for. THQ. Do you? It's in the game. Oh no, that's, that's EA. EA. Yeah. But THQ. It's in the game. <laughs> that's it's the, oh, that's true. That's true. Wait, it's in the game. <laughs> There's a lot of great games on the N64. There's a lot of nostalgia for this console for people like us. And we hope that you've enjoyed checking out this collection, this console. There's a lot of stuff we obviously couldn't cover with other great 3D platformers like Rayman, other random fighting games like Fighter Destiny and Fighter Destiny 2. But regardless, we're so glad you uh, took the time to watch this and got to learn about my N64 collection. Hey, his, so daughters, his, his daughters are asleep. My kids are sleeping right now, but we'll still. They, they, okay. were, they were sleeping. Yeah, until now. They're awake. <laughs> why, why, I'm not saying bye. All by myself. Huh? You I just have, did. I'm a person. Uh, you, you're magical. <laughs> that was. <laughs> Star Fox had a mode on it.